Hello, my name is Luke, and in this video, we're gonna see how to convert a PyTorch neural network into the Onyx file format. This will allow us to deploy our model in a range of environments without the use of PyTorch. And at the end, as an example, I'll show you how we can deploy our Onyx model on a Raspberry Pi. But first, what is Onyx? So Onyx, or the Open Neural Network Exchange format, is an open source format or representation with which we can construct or represent our neural network models. It is widely supported by a range of formats, but by converting our PyTorch model to it, we gain the functionality of all these different environments and tools. It is very common to convert your model to this Onyx format if you want to deploy it, as many specialty hardwares require this Onyx format. When converting our model to this format, we can also optimize the model in order for it to run faster than we would be able to just by using PyTorch's inference. So to see how this is possible, let's look at an example. In this tutorial, we're just gonna use a pre-trained efficient net model from PyTorch's model zoo. So we're gonna construct the necessary data transform and also build our model using the pre-trained weights available. So let's create our model using those pre-trained weights and put them onto our GPU. We'll put it in eval mode and let's load a test image. So we have this image of a German shepherd here we can pass that through our transform and we'll get our tensor. Now to get an estimate of the inference time for our PyTorch model, we're gonna perform inference with this image around 10 times. That's just to account for any setup time that PyTorch does when using CUDA. Let's run the inference 10 times and see what the minimum time is for inference. So you can see we get a time of 0.0123 seconds. So we're gonna use this as our baseline when comparing to the Onyx version of the model. Now on to the conversion. So PyTorch has functionality in it in order to convert a PyTorch model into an Onyx format. Now you would do this conversion after you've trained your model. If you're new to PyTorch, I have a PyTorch playlist where you can learn all the basics of PyTorch up into some advanced algorithms. But as I said, for now, we're just gonna use a PyTorch model from the PyTorch model zoo. In order to convert our model to the Onyx format, we need PyTorch to do what is called a trace. This trace is basically going to map out the forward pass of our neural network in order to build the Onyx graph. To do so, we need to provide an example input. So it needs to be the same data type and the same shape in general of the data we're gonna use. So for our efficient net, it was trained in general with a resolution of 224 by 224 pixels. So we're just gonna randomly create an image of that size. Note that the example tensor we need to use doesn't need to be a real image. Here, it's just gonna be some random noise. To export the model, we're gonna use Torch Onyx Export, and we need to provide our trained model, the example input that we're gonna to use to perform the tracing, an output file name, as well as some additional parameters. Here, this is the Onyx operation set, so the version of operations that we're gonna use. Export parameters just says we want to contain the model parameters in the same Onyx format as the graph. Do constant folding. This will tell PyTorch to compress certain areas of the graph that are constant, so they don't need to be performed every single time. And input names and output names. So when we provide an input to our Onyx model with the Onyx runtime that we'll see, we're gonna provide it as a dictionary. And so here we're just defining what the inputs are called in that dictionary, what the keys are, and what the output keys we want them to be. The dynamic axis, so when we provided that example input, we defined a resolution of the image or a shape of the tensor. Now, the Onyx format or the Onyx model is going to expect that the inputs are the same shape, but we can specify certain axes that we might want to be dynamic depending on what our model is. In our case, we might want to provide multiple images at the same time. And so we're going to make the batch dimension, so the first dimension of our tensor dynamic. So we're going to tell it that we can provide it multiple different images at the same time. So once we've run this, we should have a file called efficientnetb1.onyx, and here's mine there. And it really is that simple to convert your trained PyTorch model into the Open Neural Network Exchange format. Now, how about running our model? Well, in order to run our Onyx model, we're going to use the Onyx runtime environment. Now, the Onyx runtime, as the name suggests, is purely for running inference on our model. The good thing about using Onyx runtime is that it's actually available in a number of different environments in a number of different programming languages. So you can see we've got Python, C Sharp, JavaScript, Java, C++, and more. So we can export our model using Python and PyTorch, 
But once we have that file format, we can put it anywhere that Onyx Runtime allows. And there are actually a lot more tools that will expect an Onyx format that we can also use. But for this example, we're in Python, so we're gonna use Python's Onyx Runtime library. There are actually two versions of Onyx Runtime in Python. There's a CPU version and a GPU version. So if you just wanna do CPU inference, you'll just need to install Onyx Runtime. If you wanna do inference with your GPU, you'll need to install Onyx Runtime-GPU. Note that if you want to use your GPU with Onyx Runtime, you'll need to make sure you have CUDNN, CUDA's Neural Network Toolkit, installed separately to Torch. So you'll need a system-wide install of CUDNN. It doesn't come natively with CUDA. So PyTorch actually installs with its own version of CUDNN, and so you might be used to using it with PyTorch, but if you want to use Onyx Runtime without PyTorch, you'll need to make sure you have that installed separately. You'll also need to make sure you have a CUDNN version less than nine, so eight point something, as Onyx Runtime does not support CUDNN version nine. If you're struggling to install CUDNN at a system-wide level, and you don't really care about having to import Torch, you can include an import Torch at the start of your imports, and then Onyx Runtime will use CUDNN from PyTorch. So I've got CUDNN installed separately to PyTorch, so I don't need to import it. In order to use our Onyx model, we need to create an inference session with Onyx Runtime. To do so, we just use Onyx Runtime inference session and provide the file name for our model and also include the providers. So I'm going to be using my GPU, so my CUDA GPU, so I'm going to use the CUDA extensions provider. If you were going to use CPU, you would put CPU extension provider. Here we're also just loading the ImageNet class names so we can see if our model got the prediction correct. So in Python, Onyx Runtime expects a NumPy image as an input. And so I've just created a few helper functions here to crop and normalize our input image to make sure it's still in the same format that the model expects. So we'll load our image and crop it to the correct size, convert it to a NumPy image, and then perform the normalization as expected. Once we have our NumPy image, we're gonna put it in that dictionary. Here, we're just taking the name of the input that we already created. So it's just input and we're creating that dictionary. Once we have our input image in this format, we can do inference on our model. To perform inference, we simply use the dot run function and provide the input image. So let's see with our Onyx model, how fast inference is by doing 10 passes. Okay, so we can see the minimum inference time here is 0.0031 seconds. If we compare that to our other model, it was 0.0123. So it's about three to four times faster in this format. Again, that's because of the optimization and compression that happens when we export our model and some optimization that Onyx Runtime does as well. So even if you're not looking to deploy your model, you're just looking to use it locally, it is still useful to convert your model to this format. So finally, let's have a look at our model outputs. And you can see it gets it correct, class 235, which is German Shepherd. So our model accuracy has been preserved and we are now able to deploy our model where we want. So as an example, I've just created this Onyx inference script. It's very simple. It does pretty much what we saw with the Onyx inference before, but here we're using our webcam in order to stream video data. And when we press our spacebar, it will take an image and do inference on that with our model. So I'm gonna run this on my Raspberry Pi. You can either git clone the whole repo or just copy this file as well as your Onyx model. So I've SSH'd in, I've copied the scripts and I've created my environment. So I haven't installed PyTorch on this Raspberry Pi at all. We're doing inference with Onyx without PyTorch here. So I can simply run the script and using the webcam, we should have a little window pop up. So here I'm just looking down on my desk and I can start to provide it with some objects. So let's say I provide it with this bolt here. I get that in frame and make sure you've got the window selected. If you just hit spacebar, we should get an inference. There we go. So class label screw, correct. And it took about 0.7 seconds to do inference. So this is just a Raspberry Pi 3B. Um, so not the latest Raspberry Pi. We're not using any Raspberry Pi accelerators. If there is interest, I, I might get a Raspberry Pi accelerator. I don't have one yet. So if you are interested in seeing how you can use those Raspberry Pi accelerators, let me know in the comments and uh, let me know if there's any other examples you'd like to see. So let's keep going. Let's try another object. I've got a safety pin here. 
Note that with these pre-trained PyTorch models, we will only be able to classify objects that it was trained on. So if you try an object that wasn't in the data set or wasn't a part of the class in the data set, not gonna be able to classify it at all really. So safety pin is the data set. Didn't get it quite right there. Let's try again, we go safety pin. So if I try something like this SD card adapter, that wasn't a class. So it's gonna get some wild guess. They go rubber eraser, pencil eraser. Let's try one more. Ballpoint pen, fountain pen, so pretty close. Ballpoint pen is in there. Let's try again. There we go. Ballpoint pen. That model that we're using is quite a small one in order for inference not to you know, take a huge amount of time. The accuracy isn't amazing, but it is still usable. So this might be something you can build into an application. Of course, this doesn't run in real time. So maybe you include something like a motion detector that detects motion and can run in real time. And then once you detect motion, you can pass it to your model and then perform inference and see what the actual object was. In any case, that's all I have for you in this video. As I said, if you have anything you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. If you wanna see how we can use our Raspberry Accelerator with the neural networks and the Onyx file format, also let me know. And if there's enough interest, I can do that as well. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.